Hey, what's going on, everybody? Uh, welcome back. Thank you to everybody who tuned in to the live this morning. Um, I'm going to do another one in the morning. Uh, Lotto Fridays. I hope we don't make this a habit, but uh, we'll see. I wanted to make this a uh, trade review slash market update slash uh, just say hi to you guys video. So <laughs> we'll see where this one goes. Um, I'm playing a new ticker. I've uh, been watching it for uh, the whole week, probably since, uh, since Monday, and just watching uh, the option chain on it, how it moves. Um, and the ticker is XSP. It is a derivative of um, SPX. So it's a, it's a SPX mini, uh, similar to SPY. Um, not sure why one would play the other... Uh, versus this, uh, I'm still figuring that out, but I like the way it moves. I primarily play SPX. They're much bigger contracts. And I'm not sure I'm sold on this yet uh, entirely, but I, I did want to go over a, a couple trades that I took. I um, want to show you guys the options chain and show you uh, you know, where I entered and exited the trade. Uh, it's, a, it's different on the mindset because, like I said, the contracts are much bigger on SPX, and that's what I'm used to playing. So the you know the math is automatic in my head when I play SPX. Uh, you know I know if, if I'm playing a thirteen dollar contract, I know what I need to get to to um, to get to X, Y, and Z. So so we'll see. But uh, I took a a day trade on XSP, and I got to get used to that name. So bear with me. Uh, it was so I entered here on this candle, looking for a bear break. Uh, it didn't come. I took, what was the first one I took? 438 uh, puts. So with SPX uh, and XSP, it is a 10 to 1 ratio. So 4,500 would be 450 in this case. So I put I took one day to expiration, uh, 438 puts, paid 28 cents for them. Uh, entered here looking for a bear break. It didn't come. It's, you know, I spent a couple hundred bucks. I wasn't, I wasn't going to lose sleep. I wanted to test out uh, this new ticker that I've been watching. Um, it was pretty easy to get filled. Uh, I'll show you guys the spreads in a little bit. Um, but it didn't break bear, but I didn't, I, like I wasn't interested in cutting it either because we still had the ADMA, which had been acting as resistance uh, pretty much all morning. So, you know, you got test here, test here, Test here, test here, test everywhere on the ADMA. You got a big upper wick here, uh, and again, just gave me the confidence to stay in the uh, stay in the uh, in the play. So, still a bear flag, uh, wicked way up here and sold off. You got double top, and it came all the way down. I exited somewhere here on this candle uh, for the four. What is this at four thirty eight, uh, eleven forty seven? So I was in there a little bit over an hour. Yeah, hour and a half or so. So in and out on that one, uh, I doubled back and got 444 puts. Uh, what was this? Those went from 95 to a dollar 48. So I don't know, 60 or 70% on those, but closed them. They, they move pretty well. Uh, very similar to SPX. Here's the chain uh, that I took somewhere around noon West coast time. So you can see, you know, it's not as tight as, as the spy spreads, which are usually, you know, only a penny, uh, two at the most. So you have, you know, a six cent spread here, uh, four cent spread here, four cent spread here. Um, it's not, it's not that bad. Uh, you get filled pretty easily. Uh, you know, it's, it's, it's worth trying out if you, if you're into SPX and looking to play, uh, you know, something with smaller contract sizes and, and, uh, you know, and you can test out and play around with some, because I know a lot of people are interested in playing S SPX and not necessarily spy. So this is uh, this is one way to do it. So if you uh, if you have any questions, feel free to drop some comments. Uh, let's look at what the market did today. Uh, if you watched the live, um, I was pretty uh, clear when I said the market was was going to wait on what Amazon did. Look at this candle. Look at the daily candle. It's almost non-existent. Yeah, we didn't have much range. You know, it's a, I don't think I've ever seen this. What's this? You know, 40, 20 or 30 point range. It's not, it, it wasn't anything crazy. It was very small. 
It's a tiny, tiny candle inside bar. And the market, you know, hinged on whatever Amazon's earnings were going to be. Uh, two things I said, they, you know, they would have had to split or raise their price on Prime. Uh, initially, there was rumors that uh, right after hours that they did split, they did not split, but they did raise the price on Prime. So from 120 to 140, and that's what sent them uh, up 15%, I think up as high as 20% at some point during the uh, during the after hour session. So those went crazy. Those are up 500 bucks or something like that. Uh, we'll see what it looks like in the morning, which will be fun. It'll make the entire market, um, should make the entire market run, you know, kind of like what Apple did. Uh, Amazon is weighted pretty heavily on, uh, on the market. So uh, you can pull a fib from both ways. You know, we're still not out of the woods entirely. And I'll show you what that looks like just for, from a visual perspective. Uh, so we opened the day, we opened the morning and I had this fib drawn originally. Uh, this is a top down. We wicked off the 707 and it looked like we were heading down. So you got this boom and, you know, usually when you, when you, you, know, you bounce from the golden pocket, if you, you know, inverse it, it's, it's the same type of bounce, higher highs and higher lows. Uh, in this case, uh, we kind of are setting up uh, lower highs and lower lows. So uh, we would like to see a gap up over this resistance it is uh, a bull flag if you pull it from the other way so i'll do that now so from these tweezer bottoms to the swing high wicked off the 0 0.382 which again is a very bullish retracement and it wicked off to the penny just further proving the point that fibs work you draw the fibs swing swing low swing high and this is what you get so this is still very bullish if you're pulling it from this way. It depends on what your bias is. If you have any bias in the market, um, you know it. It, you know, it's, it's clear to me. You know, we're in the middle of resistance, and and we also have, have, have you know wicked off a very bullish retracement level. So, got to see what the market does tomorrow, how it reacts, how Amazon opens, how the rest of the market opens. Um, so, and, and we'll go from there. NQ, same thing. Very flat today. Nothing going on. Also, somewhere they got to the golden pocket and bounced back to the downside. So, we'll need you know some volume to come in, a big push up. Got to push, got to blow through the golden pocket and then blow through you know this resistance here. Same thing on on SPX. I didn't I didn't make that reference, but same thing. We got to blow through this gap up and and start to trust a uh, uh, test uh, this upper trend line here at forty seven hundred. So, I think ultimately that's the target that it wants to reach. Um, so you know have an eye on, on what we need to do. Apple looks like it's ready to go. Uh, I can pull the fib. I can redraw. I can redraw this here. Low. High. Again, wicked off the point 236. That's extremely bullish. Apple looks like it's been ready to go all day. Maybe an inside bar tomorrow. Let Amazon take all the all the limelight. And uh, if you're feeling a little froggish for a lotto, maybe swing some 175 calls uh, over the weekend. You know, it's it's look it looks like it's primed and ready to go. It's just kind of pausing and waiting for the rest of the market. Tesla's at a critical critical area. This is not the best. Uh, it's not the best close. It's an inverted hammer. Uh, it can probably look down to. Uh, the golden pocket, which is around 835. Um, I was very tempted to get some 850 puts. They were just a little pricey, especially going, uh, you know, into zero days, into Friday. So not not really worth it. The the risk to reward was not there, in my opinion. A couple bucks, maybe maybe it's worth it, but not not so much. Uh, Facebook Facebook has to hold 235. Uh, you can see it came down here. 235.74 was the low of the day. It needs to hold that. That has to hold. It's down to 190, maybe even lower if it loses 235 tomorrow. I think it's going to fight for that uh, very hard for the rest of the week. Um, you know, I think it'll blow right past 200. 190 is very possible. Here's here's 208. 208 would be the next the next stop after 200, and then anywhere after that is you know 195 something like that. So uh, Netflix is ugly again. Can't really touch it. Uh, 
look at this pattern. There's just, I mean, there is no pattern. It's just ugly. There's nothing you can do with this. So my do not touch list. And of course, Amazon way up here, right into, this is where it's going to open or higher, right into resistance. Look at that. Last time it hit this area, shot right back down, has to, it has to blow through it. Um, you know, it's not, I think a lot of this was short covering. People were short. Uh, Amazon going into after hours. The contracts were so expensive. I don't. I don't see how anyone could could want to do that. They were thousands of dollars per contract. Um, Two hundred, three hundred dollars out of the money. So uh, I don't. You know, there had there 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 was short covering there, and that's that's how we got way up here. So it'll be interesting to see where we open in the morning. You know, we saw this with uh, obviously on a much smaller scale. AMD gapped up huge and gave ten back. Talked about that in the live stream. Um, Apple didn't hold, or Apple did hold. Apple hold most of its uh, earnings gains, so or all of it actually. So uh, we got to see what 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 happens. You know, it's 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 uh, right now. It closed at a at a bottleneck area, right into resistance. So and what was also support way back when? So a couple times, one, two touches, three touches, and then it you know support turned into resistance after it broke this. So. Keep an eye on that. Google Google lost 3,000 very fast um, and also not a very good daily candle. This is very ugly. Uh, you'd think it'd be able to hold 3,000 with the way earnings and the split is coming up. We saw what happened with Tesla. We saw what happened with Apple and its split. And it doesn't look like Google has that. thought it had the potential to get to 3,000, 3,400. It doesn't look like it's accepting any of that, so... I think ultimately a, a 20 to 1 split is really bad for Google in the long term. Um, but, you know, we won't be able to play it the way we used to play it, uh, you know, at a $100 stock or whatever. I get their intention. They're trying to get to uh, get to the Dow, I guess, is the rumor. So, you know, over 3,000, we can we can get another push and, and play Google uh, and its swan song for options because after, after the split, we won't be able to play it at all. You know, you get... You get paid on these big names because the the contracts are so big, uh, the value is so much, the premium moves so fast, you know, one way or another. So, um, shop should get, uh, yeah, shop's gonna get a nice nice bounce from Amazon. So, you know, if you can't, you know, if your account won't allow you to play Amazon in the morning, you can possibly play uh, Shop. It, it should run with Amazon the same way, but we'll we'll find out in the morning. Uh, we'll find out a lot in the morning. So. Thank you guys for tuning in. Uh, I look forward to uh, trading again with you guys in the morning. I'm back, so uh, we'll start with a with a pre market watch. I won't do a live the whole show or the whole uh, the whole morning, but you know we'll try and stay on for 15, 20, 30 minutes after open tomorrow. So I'll post that link in here. Thank you guys again for watching. Uh, don't forget to hit the like button or the thumbs up or whatever they call it here on YouTube, and uh, I'll see you guys in the morning.